St. Francis of Assisi said, it is in dying that we are born into eternal life. Jesus Christ, through his life and death and resurrection, gave hope not only for eternal life, but for our lives here on earth. That is our greatest legacy of hope. Tonight we gather to honor those giants among us who have crossed into life eternal. They too have left a legacy of hope. This wonderful inheritance calls us to leave a legacy of hope to others. We celebrate the lives of those bishops who have given themselves to God and to serving God's people in ways we cannot know or measure. With hearts of gratitude, we rejoice in the legacy we've been given by them. It's not an exaggeration to claim that millions of lives have been impacted by their collective ministries. These bishops were bishops for a combined total of 563 years. They've influenced generations. Through these wonderful saints whom we honor this night, God has granted to us a witness that because of their legacy lives on. They have lived the mission of the United Methodist Church. They have made hundreds of thousands of disciples of Jesus Christ and by their witness and their ministry, praise God, the world has been transformed. Tonight we symbolize the gift of their lives for all times as these lanterns of light are released into the sea, the sea of life. A beautiful poem by Henry Van Dyke, paraphrased here, describes the mystery of passing from this life to eternal life. I am standing at the seashore, a ship at my side spreads white sails majestically in the morning breeze and starts for the blue ocean. She is an object of beauty and strength and I stand and watch her until at length she is only a ribbon of white cloud, just for the sea and sky come to mingle with each other. Then someone at my side said, there she's gone. Gone where? Gone from my sight, that is all. She is just as, as large in mast and hull and spar as she was when she left my side and just as able to bear her load of living freight to her destination. Her diminished size is in me, not in her. And just at the moment someone at my side said, there she's gone, there are other voices ready to take up the glad shout, there she comes. It is going that we arrive. It is dying that we are born into eternal life. On a morning long, long ago, three women, Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James and Salome, went to the tomb. They brought spices in order to care for the body of their beloved Savior. They expected to find death. But instead, what these women found was not death, but an empty tomb. And they received the unbelievably astonishing news. He's been raised up. He's no longer here. He is risen. And then the messenger told them to tell the disciples that Jesus would be found on the shores of Galilee. My beloved sisters and brothers, we proclaim the reality that because of Jesus' resurrection, the empty tomb is a symbol of hope. The image of the empty tomb inspires and impels us. This is the hope of the world, 
The tomb is empty when hope is rare, when discouragement overwhelms, when life's issues become more than we can bear, when there seems to be no future. The empty tomb proclaims life is possible. Death, discouragement, despair does not have the last word. Gary was one who found hope in spite of the most unimaginable suffering. Gary was an exuberant 29-year-old pastor. In fact, he was just three months from his ordination as elder. When he was swimming off the shore in New Jersey and he was caught in a freak wave which snapped his neck at C5 and he instantly was a quadriplegic. In the next few days before any surgical repair could be done, he suffered complications and then lost speech. He experienced anger, despair, and many obstacles. Eventually, he became a resident of a nursing home. I was visiting Gary with a, one day with our friend Martha. As we looked around the room, we saw many framed paintings. We said to Gary, what are these? He communicated with us by moving his eyes across a letter board. They're paintings, Christmas presents. I couldn't afford anything else. Martha said to Gary, do you miss hanging out at the mall? Gary communicated back words I'll never forget. I don't miss anything. I'm more of a minister now than I was before the accident. I looked at him as my eyes filled with tears and I said, Gary, for you to say that is a miracle. He said, you have to lose your life to find it. His faith grew because of his circumstances. Gary's capacity to trust God and to see resurrection promise provided for him and for those who, of us who knew him, and perhaps even for you who hear the story, a legacy of hope. It is in dying that we are born into eternal life. Our legacy as a people of faith is our encounter with Jesus. Jesus brings hope to a world turn by, torn by strife and turmoil, conflict and confusion, cynicism and suspicion, deaths and disease. In the midst of problems and circumstances for which there seems to be no way forward, in the midst of trials and unbelievable suffering in the midst of differences that seem unbridgeable. Is it not true even here in our general conference? And yet our encounter with Jesus offers a third way and hope breaks forth. This is the fundamental promise of our faith. Last summer, I came to understand the power that Jesus, encountering Jesus, has in mission. The Susquehanna Conference Cabinet spent a week in York, Pennsylvania, working with a group of teenagers, almost a hundred of them, scattered throughout York. They repaired homes, they cleaned parks, they tended gardens, they worked on houses, and for a week made a statement of Christ's presence in that community. I was assigned to a team of four teenagers. They spent days reconstructing a porch in the small home of Nadine and the four generations of her family who lived in that house. Four-year-old Solomon and his friend Jamal 
watched from the lock screen door as these teens worked, and of course they chatted with the teens nonstop. And Solomon said many times he sure would like to be out there working on that porch. When the porch was finally finished, there was a great celebration as, as Solomon jumped up and down with hope in his eyes, he said, when I get big, I want to build porches and help peoples. Our Christian faith provides a wonderful cycle of hope for life. In the bulb, there is a flower. In the seed, an apple tree. In our death, a resurrection at the last, a victory, something God alone can see. Archbishop Desmond Tutu says, there is not a situation anywhere in the world that is not transfigurable. Isn't it true? In the power that God has to transform, even the impossible becomes possible. It is our encounter with Jesus that changes lives. Our capacity to allow Jesus into our hearts. My friends, we can make all the decisions here we want to make. We can set all the guidelines, we can do all of that. But unless we let Jesus into our hearts, unless we dare to encounter and be encountered by Jesus, unless we commit ourselves to doing this deep spiritual work, opening ourselves to the love of God in powerful ways and sharing that love that others might say, oh, see how they love each other. Other. then all that we do is done in vain but if we allow Christ to be in our midst in powerful and recognizable and tangible ways all things are possible the women who encountered the messenger at the empty tomb heard the message you will see Jesus by the shores of Galilee. The bishops, those beloved servants of God whom we honor this night, give us hope today. We are now the messengers who must proclaim the message of the empty tomb. Life is promised even in death. As we celebrate the lives of those saints who've gone before us, we do not see those ships sail away. Rather, because of the legacy they leave, we see the ships coming in full sail, carried on the winds of the Spirit. Jesus has left for us a legacy of possibility, of reconciliation, of new life. We are called to recommit ourselves to live in such a way that we offer to the world a legacy of hope. Amen and amen.